Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is December 19th, 2021. Howard, how is the COVID situation in, in Phoenix? Um, I don't know. I've been in Portland where I don't think the sun has... No one has seen the sun in a month. I don't know what the hell... Ha- <laughs> Portland is a really weird city. I went there in the summer for a few days. Uh, yeah, definitely weird feeling. <laughs> I don't know how people live there. God bless. Um, so I don't know. I feel like shit, but I don't think it's because of the COVID. I just think it's, I haven't had such bad weather in two years. So hopefully, I feel better tomorrow. But um, possibly, you could be. This could be the first COVID uh, momentum Monday. Huh. I'm gonna go get a test tomorrow. I'm not feeling great. Yeah, sounds good. But what about San Diego? Whatever. I mean, New York's a mess. I mean, San Diego. We reintroduced some measures like uh, uh, masks for indoors, but no one really is really following those new guidelines, like not in the gyms, not really in the restaurants. So people are still, you know, not really uh, getting too serious about it. <clears throat> but uh, all around the world, cases are rising. Definitely something market is paying attention to. If you uh, look at the price section in all the COVID testing stocks, in all the vaccine stocks, um, and some others, but um, the market in general has been, uh, you know, getting more volatile lately. This is a chart of the Nasdaq Composite. You know, this is not the Nasdaq 100; it's a Nasdaq Composite, so it has about 5,000 names or so. So it's better representation of uh, the overall market. And mm-hmm. as you can see here, it's kind of making low, uh, lower highs. I mean, it's still above its rising 200-day moving average. Not a big deal, but definitely it has been under some pressure lately. And if it loses, you know, this level here, you know. Uh, 14, you know, 14,900, you know, we might probably test the, the 200, but like, not a big deal. Um, no, it, feel, it feels like if we don't have to shock that we, if we don't, because the underlying weakness. Is definitely a lot of weakness in individual stocks, especially <coughs> um, many of the momentum, momentum leaders from last year. So last week on Wednesday, we have an FOMC meeting, uh, basically the Fed didn't do anything, you know, they said they're going to, accelerate um, tapering a little bit but they're still do, uh, they're still uh, buying bonds every month and they expect to do three uh, interest rates hikes next year it felt like the fed is underreacting and it's kind of behind the curve in terms of inflation especially considering the record high um, cpi and ppi numbers which we all know that they don't really l- reflect the reality so it, that's, this is why we saw that big rally on uh, Wednesday afternoon. The market really thought that the Fed is underreacting and many of those uh, worst hit names, you know, biotech and the ARC, the software names that, that are down 40, 50% from their 52 week highs, they, they kind of bounced significantly on Wednesday afternoon uh, and finished strong. Uh, then there was a test the next day on Thursday and then on Friday another strong day. So definitely we're, we're starting to see uh, some rotations. So a lot of the losers, the big losers this year are starting to bounce a little bit. While anything that actually held well up until last week, it started to crack. Like we're talking uh, home builders that were near 52 week guys, they're starting to pull back. Like all the, also the mega cap, the, the the Nasdaq 100 starting to crack a little bit. Um, anything that held really well is starting to reverse. What 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 else are you seeing? Yeah, I mean the same same thing we've been talking about for weeks. You know, the, either we we're going to get a big bounce, or the leaders would catch up. Where where the where was the SMH? So SMH is also starting to grow, also <laughs> one of the leaders. I mean, still, definitely still above its 50-day uh, yeah. uh, moving average, but as you can see, relative strength rating is starting to, to decline. Yeah, I mean, JP Morgan downgraded cloud stocks. That doesn't happen at the top. Um, you know, where were they? Is that the cloud? Okay, thanks. This is one of the ETFs, so yeah. Yeah. Um, so... You know, I just I don't have a feel. Like I've been saying for a few weeks, I've been in retreat, retreat mode. It seems like all year. So it's not like I'm anything happened to make me not want to be in retreat mode. Um, 
I don't think it's a it's a tape where you can be aggressive. Like Apple broke out, but like I think it pulled right back. <coughs> yeah, Coleman was holding up it pulled back. Um, so you know, I I don't see anything. The home builders, like you said, pulled back. I don't want to get too dramatic here, but like, you know, we got an inactive government. We've got um, COVID flare-ups. I mean, it's it's messing with people's schedules. You know, people are tired of being locked down. Toronto people are really upset. New York cases are really high. Airports are busy. I'm guilty as charge being in Portland for a bar mitzvah this weekend. So if it's, it's spread, you know, it's too late. Like if this thing is, is viral, as they say. <coughs> Look at me. This yeah. could be my, my, my last moment on Monday. Well, and you're, you're the guy with three vaccines, right? You have a booster as well. So it's probably- I have a booster. Yeah. I've been careful, but I've also, you know, been living my life. And, um, you know, people don't want to be locked up, but it's the reality is COVID is still out there. A lot of people are sick. But at the same time, um, the economy is not horrible. <coughs> and, um, but you do have really, you know, real signs of inflation, right? Like prices are, are a little bit silly and a lot of stuff. Um, so people want to be out. Um, if I look at the, you know, Simon Property Group, you know, I don't think people are like that scared. If you think about where this traded in the first go round, if we look back to March 2020, this was looking like it would go out of business. Um, that's a better proxy than the airlines, which always look like they're going to go out of business. Um, so if you look at Jets. Um, that always looks terrible. But again, it looks like it's heavy and rolling over. But the airlines were full. If we look at the cruises, you know, maybe they should just be out of business. And then it's infuriating, as I wrote about this week, where's Carnival? To see the banks and the drug companies, you know, under, under I was saying under Trump, he hated big tech, um, which is, you know, political and you know there's there's much to hate there i guess but what do we get instead we've got uh, the drug companies and and the big banks <coughs> and the home builders all the same three that got us into the financial crisis in uh, the 90s and 2000 so you know pick your poison uh, there's some strength, like I said, you showed there the, the healthcare stocks, right? XLV, was that? Yeah, I mean, definitely the strength has been in the defensive sector, healthcare, utilities, consumer staples, but even they are starting to kind of crack. And uh, if, if for a moment, just forget about the next two weeks, if we just look from a really big picture perspective, typically when you see defensive sectors like healthcare, staples, and utilities leading, that's kind of topping market behavior. Uh, I mean, obviously it could be you know, six months ahead, but it, it's never really a positive sign when defensive sectors are the only ones on the 52 week high list and they're leading. Yeah, it's that JP Morgan got a 200 million or $150 million WhatsApp fine. So again, you want the bank, you know, if I look at Capital One, American Express, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, um, these are the these are the companies that everybody was supposed to bitcoin and fintech was supposed to disrupt when these guys are flush they can't help themselves they're going to screw up the economy you know um tech has not screwed up and caused a crash uh the banks do uh lending does and so um you know we, we, we've got the banks that are really strong again and they're doing their thing and no one's watching them. And, um, you know, that's kind of like more of what I'd be worried about. But at the same time, wow, so what's this upstart? Yeah, so, so a lot of these just came right back 
you know. Yes, in, a lot in, of the momentum leaders definitely are under 40, 50 percent. Yeah, you're uh, flipping through some of the momentum leaders. They just come right back. Uh, drawdowns. And, uh, but and we've come full circle. You know, when I get to an airport, I, I go to a taxi cab. Like you pull up Uber. <laughs> and, you know, I was Mr. Uber for, I don't know, eight years. And now when I get to an airport, I prefer to get a taxi. Actually, so, like a few months ago, <laughs> Uber was kind of in the middle of the summer, Uber was more expensive than, than a cab. And yeah, now, let's lately, do it. lately. And it's a longer wait, like at an airport half the time. So. Maybe. But lately, I noticed that Uber prices have gone down. And, you know, they have. Some very interesting like functions where like the rider can share their uh, their location with someone else just for safety reasons. So they're evolving as a company. Uh, I don't think they're going away. They're just uh, yeah. I didn't say that. Them. I'm just saying, just like all this technology, we thought we'd have new banking. We have Bitcoin and Goldman's at all time. I, I'm still getting in taxis after you know. I get to San Francisco. I got in a taxi. That's where Uber started. And it was a much more pleasant experience than waiting for for an Uber at the airport. Meaning, you know, it was like O.J. Simpson. I get out of the airport, I walk right into a taxi, and I'm off like an old Hertz commercial. So, um, what's old is new. You know, it's, it's a little bit frustrating, but it's just reality. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just a good time to uh, spend time with the family and, and make sure you honor your stops. Like. Yeah, interesting the meme stocks finally bounced a little bit but i, I don't it's just not, it means nothing these things are broken um you know volumes drying up interest has been drying up uh <clears throat> message volume is down around the board no one cares about these even on reddit um and, and in a bear market or in the beginnings of a rollover uh people just start caring about preserving capital not about meme stocks and whatever yeah, and what, bear, else, what else are you seeing, I mean, Anything you're seeing? Well, in, in a bear market, all those bounces to declining 20, 50 day moving average or shorting opportunities. Uh, so if you're looking strictly for the next week or the next couple of weeks, I think on the long side, there might be some bouncing opportunities in the worst case sectors, biotech and uh, like momentum software leaders. Like we might see some, you know, they've been beaten so bad that we might see some continuation in biotech, like probably until like one, XBI until 120 until the declining 50 day moving average. If you're like a short term swing or intraday trader, I think ARC also might have some, some room to bounce. You see the futures are down about 1% so far uh, tonight. So tomorrow we'll probably gap down. So it'll be interesting to see if we see like a, a red to green. Um, yeah, the market's surprised. It can also begin an acceleration, right? Like Apple, Amazon, Shop. These companies have held up very well and they're still extremely, so it doesn't take much you know, VIX is still very low. It wouldn't take much for things to tip over in a very negative way, right? We've lacked yes, leadership. absolutely, yeah. It, We've lacked leadership now, what, five years, five and a half years. Uh, <clears throat> these things start piling up. You have inflation. Last guy to yell fear, but like I said, I'm on the defense. Mm -hmm. I'm raising capital. You know, I'm, I may throw out a few trades in the cloud, but like... I'm probing. I'm not like excited about anything right here. I think you have to be in preservation of cash. It's been a great run. Like I don't want to be in Goldman Sachs and home builders. It's just not, it's, those aren't good memories for me. And I don't, that's not what I want to own. And we're, <clears throat> there is no, there's many reasons why you can get an acceleration into selling. So I think you want to just be ultra, <clears throat> careful about a position you put on right here and it's okay if you pay higher prices in a stronger market where there's more leadership but in a defensive market for you to go on offense that just doesn't make sense exactly the 52 week highly is definitely very thin uh, mostly defensive name yeah so uh, but there could be like i said there could be a really good bounce in the oversold cloud stocks yeah but again, that's, exactly that's for you know it's not the way i like to uh, lick my chops <clears throat> More likely here is uh, is the leadership catching up to some of the broken down clouds. But I think you know defense is is, is the name of the game. Hopefully, I can switch my mind pretty quickly here. But uh, yeah, I mean, all of us are flexible, and we have the right to change our mind quickly. But as of right now, definitely uh, enough reasons to uh, to play defense. Obviously, everything depends on your time frame. If you're an intraday trader, there are good opportunities every single day. If you're a swing trader. 
you need to probably use a smaller position size and uh, be a lot, a lot more selective. What are the COVID stocks? What are the COVID stocks? Are so, uh, like all the testing stocks actually have been doing really well, like D, DGX, like uh, yeah. Q, QDEL, uh, Quest, and kind of breaking out actually. Uh, these are all yeah. the testing stocks. Obviously, there'll be a lot of testing going on uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, coming. And um, the vaccine stocks, very volatile, kind of setting up, it seems. But the drug company is setting up because they're becoming, like I heard liquidity joking, that they're becoming SaaS stocks. You're just going to end up. Yeah, Pfizer right? super strong. Because You're just going to end up, these are like recurring revenue stocks. Next year, he has a vaccine, vaccine and also has, has that antiviral pill that supposedly prevents hospitalization. So definitely, this, the Pfizer is probably the strongest stocks right now in the market. Yeah, is the yeah and not what I want to see. You know, these are not the companies I want to see leading us higher. These are yeah. not my favorite. I mean, they have the sales and the earnings growth too. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's a very slow mover though, because it's, it has what, 5 billion shares, 5.6 billion shares. It's a very big float. So. Yeah. So, um, but interesting. Listen, there's, there's always something for someone. I just prefer to see a little more uh, broad tape where everybody's yeah. making money. Uh, all right, we'll check in next week. Hopefully, uh, tape firms up. And, and but I think you got to be more careful of downside than upside. Here. Yeah. All right. Enjoy the holidays. All right. Have a great week. Bye.